This video is going to demonstrate how to use the line segment tool. You will see how to change the stroke weight, create a dashed line. You will also learn what the shortcut keys shift and alt do. Follow along with this video. You will turn in what you make. You may pause the video to perform each task. Press alt and tab at the same time on your keyboard to switch between the video and illustrator. You may think, I know how to draw lines and you probably do but I want to show you some quick techniques that may help you when you're drawing lines and show you how to troubleshoot if your lines aren't quite working how you want them to. First of all, we need to open up the document, Basic Lines. Go up to File, Open, and browse to the location that your teacher has indicated that the file is located. Find the file, Basic Lines, and we're going to open it by clicking on Open. Now when this document's here, you can see it's not showing the entire document, so I'm going to press Control and Zero so I can see the entire document. Now I can see this is showing us what we need to do. I'm going to start off by selecting the Line Segment tool, and if you hover your mouse over on the tools, you can see a tool tip pops up telling me that the Line Segment tool is there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this slash or the Line Segment tool, and what I want to do is use the Line Segment tool to draw a line, number one. So I'm going to go ahead and click and draw a line. That's simple enough. Now my line, if you notice, it kind of goes up at a slight angle. It's a straight line because it's uh, just drawn between two points, but it's not flat. That's okay. The instructions say to draw a line, and that's just what I did. Now this next thing says to draw a line segment tool that is, at, that is exactly two inches at zero degrees. That means the line has to be perfectly flat. Now how am I going to do that? First of all, I can click and drag and I can kind of eyeball it and think, okay, right there looks perfectly flat at zero degrees, but I don't know for sure. Uh, what I could also do, now looking at this, I have to get it two inches. The way to get it two inches, I could grab a ruler and start measuring, but I'm going to go ahead and delete this line. I've, I've drawn it. I'm going to press the delete key. This will delete the line and I want to draw a line that's exactly two inches at zero degrees. To do that, I come over to the line segment tool. With it selected, I can press enter on the keyboard and a dialog box pops up asking me how long do I want my line to be. I can simply type in here two and it will put it at two inches because I saw the unit of measurement was at inches. I always like to type in what unit I like to use just in case I'm working in pixels or, or points or some other unit of measurement, I like always type in the length I want and its unit of measurement. Now the angle, I need it to be at zero degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and type zero and I click OK. And now nothing has happened. That's because I have to take my cursor and click somewhere and it's going to show me here are the options. Two inches, zero degrees, I click OK. Now some of you may have tried clicking and if you drug just a little bit, even if it's just a hair, it's just going to draw that line. Let me delete that last one. So remember, you just have to click without moving. So I click and it's going to pull up the dialog box. And now I can type in again, two inches and zero degrees. I click that and it draws the line. That's pretty easy. I'm going to delete that second line. So now I have two lines drawn. The next one, number three, draw a line with the stroke weight set to 10 points. Now, let me talk a little bit about what the stroke is. The stroke is basically what draws the line. I'm going to draw a line here, and I'm going to try to make it as straight as possible. So I have this line. The stroke weight is how thick the line is. Up here at the top, you can see it says stroke, and it says one point. If I want to change this stroke to a thicker stroke, I can click up here on the arrow, and notice how I can increase the size. I can also click on this down arrow and change it to 10 points. Now I have a line that is set to a stroke weight of 10 points. Now just real quick, I want to show you something that many people come uh, have the mistake of, and that's having their line disappear. I'm going to click on my move tool. Coming over here, if I have a line and there's no stroke applied to it, that means there's no ink there, it's going to disappear. Down here, there's what's called the stroke and the fill. The fill is the box right here with a red slash through it. The stroke is this black box. If, the, if this black box ends up having no stroke, it's going to look like this 
and that means there's no stroke there. The line is still there. If I click, I can see there's a line, but because there's no color applied to the stroke, it's invisible to me. So if you ever lose a line or you're missing a, a, something that you have drawn, always select it, come over here and make sure the stroke has a color applied. I'm going to double click on the stroke and I'm gonna choose black again. So now I have a stroke applied. It took off my 10 point weight, so I'm gonna go ahead and increase that up to 10 points. So you can see, I now have a line with 10 points. This next instruction, draw a dash line with a four point dash and a two point gap and set the stroke weight to two points. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line and I'm going to change the stroke weight. Now I can change the stroke weight up here, but I'm gonna show you another location where you can change the stroke weight. If you come over here on the right hand side to your panels, there's a panel called stroke. If I click on this one, it gives you a couple of options. I'm gonna go ahead and change the weight here down to two. So now my weight is set to two points and there's a section called dashed lines. I can click on this dashed lines and you can see it shows me how long is the dash gonna be. In this case, it's four points and the gap is two points. The gap is the space in between each of these lines. So I can click and see I have now created that dashed line. If I wanted a thicker dashed line, I could simply change the amount. Let's say I wanted it to be 12 points with a four point gap. I can press the tab key to update and now I, oops, I forgot to select the line. So we, you have to have the line selected if you want to make any changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the line, press the tab key to update, and you can see my line is now a 12 point line with a four point gap in between each line. So it's pretty simple, but it helps out if you're creating a dashed line and you don't wanna create each dash individually. Now the next thing I wanna show you is how to create this simple house and I'm gonna show you a couple of shortcut keys. First of all, I'm gonna click back on the line segment tool and I wanna create a house with a roof angle of 45 degrees. Now, if I click and drag with my line segment tool, it's not drawing a, a line at, uh, let's, uh, let's say zero degrees, it's drawing it at different angles. I can specify or constrain this to draw at 45 degree increments. If I hold the shift key, on the keyboard, notice how when I hold the shift key, it snaps it to zero degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and it keeps going around, constraining this line to be drawn only in 45 degree increments. So the shift key will help you draw your line in a 45 degree increment angle. I'm gonna go ahead and draw one side of the roof. I'm gonna switch the line back to a no dashed line and I'm going to draw another roof side again holding the shift key now here's something I want to point out I drew this line and it's not quite matching up where I want it to be if I hold the shift key I can get it to the right angle but it's not matching up so if I press the space bar on the keyboard while I hold the shift key notice now I can move this line around while I'm still drawing it so that I can get it placed right where it needs to be. So I can hold the shift key to constrain the angle and I can hold the spacebar key while I am drawing to get it to, to match where I need it to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up my roof right there. So I have my roof lined up. Now I'm gonna draw the base of the roof and you can see my roof isn't exactly perfect up at the top. I'm more interested that you understand that you can draw different angles. I'm gonna hold the shift key again and constrain this line at zero degrees. So now I have the top triangle of my roof. Instead of redrawing the line down below, I want to duplicate this same line. To duplicate the line, I'm simply going to go over to my move tool, or sorry, my selection tool, and I'm going to take the selection tool and I'm going to hover over this line and hold the Alt key on the keyboard. The Alt key is the key next to the space bar, and I click and I drag down, and I'm going to move it down about where the bottom of the other one is. Now when I drag, notice how I can move it from side to side. If I hold the Shift key though, 
it's going to again constrain it in 45 degree angles from wherever I'm dragging from. So I'm going to hold the shift key and the alt key and drag straight down to create a duplicate of this line. I'm going to go ahead and draw another sideline right here. And again, instead of drawing a fourth line, I'm simply going to click on the selection tool, hold the alt key to duplicate this and connect it onto the other side. I'm going to hold the shift key to constrain it and keep it straight. And so you can see it's very easy to draw, but by using these simple shortcut keys of shift to constrain something to 45 degree angles or holding the alt key to duplicate something or while you're drawing press the space bar so you can move the drawing around it's going to save you time and help you become more efficient in creating your designs. Now what you need to do is save this file as your name basic lines inside of your Q1 folder inside of the Illustrator folder. Once you have done that we're going to create a digital proof or a PDF from this file using the same name as above. To create a digital proof or PDF, you're going to go up to File, and then you're going to choose choose Print if you have an Adobe PDF uh, print driver installed. Your instructor will let you know if you do have one. And if not, you can simply just go File, and then Save As, and choose Save As Type, and we're going to choose Adobe PDF, and notice how it's changed our extension from a .ai or an Illustrator file to a .pdf or PDF file. You're going to save this file, let me hit cancel, inside of your Q1 PDF folder. You will turn in the PDF following your teacher's instructions.